Hi, and welcome to my latest grandfather brew day. Today I'm going to brew a small batch of a Belgian wit beer. Here is the full 15 litre recipe. As you can see it is scrolling. Don't worry, the full recipe is in the YouTube video description. So onto the brew, and the first thing I'm going to do, because this has a lot of wheat in this, is I'm going to put some rice holes in the very bottom of the mash. This way it will actually avoid any uh, problems with the sparge or anything like that. I'm also going to take a further precaution uh, against that, which I'll talk about later. So now all of my grain is going to go on top of those rice holes, and as usual I'm going to give it all a very good stir. Make sure all of the grain is wet, and gradually introduce it as I go. So as you can see, the grain is all in now, and I've got a nice white colour here, uh, all part of the style, don't worry about that. So now I've put the mash plate on, giving it a little bit of a gap in between the grain. And the next thing I'm going to add is my trusty sink strainer, which stops all of the grain being recirculated into the wort. So during the mash, I like to sort out everything for my boil. So as you can see, in time order, I have all my different additions all laid out. So there are actually three mash steps to this beer. 49 degrees C for 20 minutes, 65 degrees C for 60 minutes, and then mash out for 10 minutes at 75. The reason for the first mash step at 49 degrees C for 20 minutes is basically to help the wheat become a little bit easier in the sparge. As you can see, we've got a beautiful golden colour here. So here we go now with the sparge, and uh, I'm happy to say that the sparge went extremely smooth, uh, nothing stuck at all, very very nice. So before I actually remove the grain basket, I've actually put a plastic bag over the top, uh, and the idea being that I can now flip this and get all of the grain directly into the bag. I find that putting the grain basket directly into a uh, fermentation bucket is actually perfect for giving it a really nice clean. So now I'll leave it like this for uh, probably about half an hour or so uh, and then rinse it all off and it comes up sparkling clean. So I've now brought the grain father to the boil and I'm controlling this uh, by using a spray bottle with star sand in it and also my mash paddle. So the next stage now is to actually stir all of this uh, foam back in, it's just protein, uh, and make sure that the uh, top of the beer is nice and clear before I actually uh, start my official boil time and actually start adding uh, bittering hops and so on. So now we're all clear, it's time to add the first bittering hop, and uh, once I've done that, obviously give it a nice stir actually into the wort. As the boil goes on, it's important to pick up uh, those extra bits of protein again and stir them back in. So we're at the stage of the boil now where I need to add my candy sugar. And what I've done is I've put the candy sugar in a glass and I'm now taking a ladle full of wort, gradually at a time adding the wort to the glass uh, in the hope that it will melt some of the candy sugar. Uh, in advance and then I can actually have an easier time of stirring it in afterwards. So I'm giving it a good stir up now and um, as much as uh, this does work for a lot of it you will still find that there are some lumps uh, left over um, but having said that you know we are reducing it and it just makes it easier when you actually add it. So not just with the candy sugar, but also with all of the other later additions, it's important to give them a really good stir in. Uh, not quite a whirlpool, but um, yeah, getting that way. But right at the end, I always do a whirlpool, uh, particularly with any pump-based system. It just makes perfect sense. So now it's time to cool my walk down, uh, ready for pitching my yeast. 
And as you can see, uh, I've been doing this for a little bit already, and it's ready for pitch. So because this uh, beer is a small batch, I'm using a small uh, carboy uh, with a funnel on top just so that I can splash my wort in still. After adding about half of the wort, I then pitch the yeast. I then add the other half of the wort uh, on top of the yeast, um, splashing it in to ensure correct aeration uh, for helping the yeast start and be nice and healthy. So I've now attached a brew belt and a temperature controller and uh, we now wait for fermentation. Uh, I was very very happy with this brew day, I hit all of the numbers that I wanted to uh, despite using the smaller malt pipe which apparently gives you a decreased efficiency though I have to say I haven't really had any problems with it. So it's now a few days later and I'm happy to tell you that the fermentation started actually for this one within three hours which I was very very happy with and it's bubbling along and fermenting very nicely. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching and please do like and subscribe if you feel inclined to. Catch me again for some more brewing videos on the Grain Father.